Hey, we got Odette. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give God the <laughs> praise and glory for allowing us to be on Facebook Live and on Zoom. Hallelujah. We uh, just want to <clears throat> encourage, invite everyone to come on in. Come on in to Zoom, and uh, we have a link on our Facebook page that'll take you uh, right to our Zoom page. And if you want to participate via uh, Facebook, you can do that as well. Uh, we just want to welcome you once again, New Life Church of Faith Adult Sunday School class. We welcome you on behalf of our pastor, Thomas W. Miller, and our first lady, Beverly A. Miller. But before we get started on our lesson, we encourage you to participate in the lesson, meaning we want you, we want to hear from you. So we, we want to, to uh, have good conversation on today, man. So if you're participating on Zoom we would, uh, and you have a question, please remember to unmute your mic when you're asking a question or making a comment. And for those who are participating via Facebook, please put your questions in the comments section so we can um, address your questions. Also, please like and share our Facebook page. We want to get the word out uh, that we have a Sunday school class available to any and everyone. And we also encourage you to share the live stream on your Facebook page if you uh, are subscribed to Facebook. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over to our own awesome, anointed, and gifted teacher for today, Minister Christine Cooper. And so for, uh, for those also that um, are tuning in, um, I just got a, a notification that some are having trouble getting into Zoom. I'm going to address that, but I'm going to turn it over to Sister, uh, I mean, Minister uh, Cooper at this time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. I'm just glad to be here on behalf of our First Lady and behalf of Pastor Thomas Miller and Lady Beverly to uh, just share the word of God in our Sunday school department. We can't say enough how much we'd like for you to participate on Zoom so that you can engage, so that we can actually hear your voice and you can express your feelings. Because one of the important things is, is that you may have some insight that someone else is going through and you can say it in a way that that person can comprehend and they can grow this by. We're all growing in the Lord doing this. So we're going to begin our lesson on today. And go to the next slide, Minister Odette, please. Next slide. Amen. I really think we're going to talk about the church in Ephesus. That's what we're going to talk about. So the book of Revelation addresses the seven letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor of modern day Turkey, Revelations 2 and 3, each letter proclaims a message from Jesus and records by John the Apostle declaring the triumphs and the failures of the uh, recipient churches and warn each congregation to what? To repent. The, uh, the advice in the letter is a prophetic forewarning of present day Christians of the snares that can lure us away from our faith. We will examine each church and reveal to New Life Church of Faith Sunday school students what the Lord Jesus was saying to the church. Next slide, please. And we're ready to get into just uh, the part of this lesson we don't want to waste no time because we want to just get into it so that we can comprehend what the lord is saying next slide minister of that please amen the truth the truth of the matter is that we all make up the church the lord jesus was talking to the church but as a member but the members within the church we must look at each church and examine in ourselves those things that must change. Amen. The Holy Spirit was just telling me that 
as we begin to get into this, we're going to begin to open up each and every church. You may find something within you through every church. So that's why we want you to be in tune with it. That's why it's important for you to be open, you to be transparent and ask the Lord to, Lord, show me in my areas of my walk with you can be able to enter into the kingdom of God. Because these letters were forewarning to teach us to think in the book of um, Ephesus, we're going to begin to just take this one step at a time. Amen. So let's go to the next slide. That's the church that I have. I have the church at Ephesus, and we're going to continue to move through each and every church. Amen. Uh, I'm going to even skip that minister of that. Let's go to the next one. And I think you have to go to the one, and the, I think one and two are flipped. And we'll just go there. So we thank everyone for coming in. Good morning. Um, Go to the next one, Minister Odette, and then we're going to come back to one. Is that not the one we're on now, Sister, um, to the angel of the church? Last down in different sections. And this is just the greeting of the letter. Okay, it says to the angels of the church of Ephesus, write these things down, say who, who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven candlesticks. This is Jesus. Jesus is the one who spoke to John and told him to write these things on a scroll while he was yet in a land of isolation. He was also in a land because he was held, mm, what's the word I want to look for? He was more or less under arrest. I thought it like Alcatraz. <laughs> you know, they put him on an island because they were trying to stop him from ministering and doing the things of God. So even if it's exile, thank you, Minister Dad. He was exiled to this island because they was trying to stop him from making disciples and doing the things that he was supposed to do for God. But the God began to show him this vision. And through this vision, he wrote these letters to each one of these churches. And we want to examine the letter of the churches and what God had to say. What the Lord is saying to us, that's what I'm saying. We need to be very transparent. He says to the angel, a lot of times angels are ministering spirits. We hear about the angels when he came before. Um, we just talked about them the other day. Mary, when she was about to have the baby Jesus, angels are considered messengers of God. Also, angels are considered at times, we don't know for sure exactly if this is the angel or he's talking about the minister of the church. They're whoever are carrying out the word of God. So John wrote these letters and we want to begin with the next verse. So go back to one minister, Odette. Amen. And what the one thing I really do want to do is, yes, you got it. Go back to the first one. When it says, I know your works. Amen. Now let us begin. We just dealt with the greeting of this letter to establish who wrote it, to establish their credibility. That's the greeting of the letter that Jesus said one who has told John to write these letters. Now it begins with verse two. It says, I know your works, your labors and your patience, and that you cannot bear evil, and that you have tested those who say that they are apostles and have found them liars. Now this is that I love about this. It says, for nothing is hidden that cannot become manifested, nor secret which shall not be known or come to light. Jesus takes an account of the things that we do. He takes an account of those things. So when he say, I know your work, that means God is saying, I know exactly what you're doing. 
I'm watching you. He is intently involved in every act of service and everything that you, I know how you cannot even bear evil. I know how you have tested people who said they were apostles and I know how you have found them to be liars. This was very, they were very consistent and dedicated in the things of God. I was thinking when I was reading this, if God was to write us a letter, what letter would he write you? Would he be able to say, as he's saying to this church, I know your works of labor. Would he be able Just tell me what you see when you read it. You don't have to point the finger at you, but just look at the letter. I like how when I was studying this, how God broke the letter down, even through the rebukes and everything that he do. It was such a pattern to me to say, Lord, when I have to talk to someone concerning the issue, I wish I can take this same pattern in which you spoke to the apostle John and dealt with the issues of the church. If I can take the same pattern, Lord, when it comes to correcting my children, if I could take the same pattern, how more effective I would be. So when we just take the first pattern and it's part, really, it's a part of a praise. It's a part of letting you know, I know you as an individual. That's an individual statement that he made right there. I know what you're doing. I know how you cannot even bear evil. So when we look at that, do we have any insights? Minister Care, has anyone said anything on Facebook? <laughs> Minister Care? Yeah, praise the Lord. They're saying praise the Lord. And um, they're just in an agreement with what you're saying so far. Amen. Is there anyone on Zoom want to say something concerning this scripture? How I know your works and your labors and your patience. I like how God is. He's sitting there letting you know individually. Amen. Anyone? Also in the books of Acts, chapter 20, verse 29 and 31, Paul wrote this to the church of Ephesus. Okay. He said, for I know that after I depart, wolves are going to come in and they're going to try to stir up the flock. They also are going to try to bring men among you. They're going to start speaking perverse things. They're going to try to draw you away. They're going to try to get disciple to disciple people after their own teaching. That's what Paul said. Watch. He said, for three years I was with you, and I warned you over and over and over to be aware of people that's going to come in. As we as a body of Christ and we are in our own, the church who the Lord has led us to, we're part of New Life Church of Faith. We need to be in tune of the people that are within our congregation. We need to be in tune with that because this letter was written to the church, but yet to the individual. You know, it's like when prayer is going forth in our church, uh, if I'm an usher that day, I'm always praying in the spirit. I'm just praying in the spirit. I'm praying in the spirit. Why? Because I want God to move. I want him to use the minister. I want his presence to be there. That's why within our church, we don't like the moving because we don't want the interruption of the spirit of God. We want God to have that liberty. And this is how that church was working. They couldn't bear things that would interrupt the spirit of God. We need to be aware of the presence of God. They were steadfast people. They were people who, who had great endurance. Amen. And we want to look at that. And we want to look at that at our, at our pastor. How many times our pastor warns us and foretells us things that we need to do because he's a shepherd. He's hearing from God, I believe, more than anyone else concerning the congregation. And I say his wife as well. I say Sister Miller as well. You know, her heart and, and her passion for the women of our church. God is always pointing to her the insight and how to reach us. And she can't bear evil. If we ever had a mother hen, that's our mother hen is Sister Miller. She can't bear people that come in and, and, and hurt our women. She don't want that. She's truly demonstrated that through her walk. 
So when God looks, he sees our works and he sees our labor and how we can't bear evil. Why do you think God said we call one another brother and sister? That's a bonding, connecting thing there. If we're each other brother and sister. That's the truth. And we need to connect to that. Amen. So let's go to the next scripture. Three, Minister Odette. And that's what we need to do. Let's go for it. Now, this part of the letter, we titled it a praise. He says, for you have persevered, you have patience, and have labored in my name for my name's sake, and have not become weary. I like that word weary, which means you have persevered. This was a solid church that worked hard and had great outreach programs and they protected the very integrity of the gospel. Protecting the integrity of the gospel is so important. We have to protect the integrity of what we believe in and, and what we stand on. We have to protect that the world is protecting there the things that they believe to be true. And we're not talking about becoming religion, but we're talking about working in these principles, being led of the spirit. This is a high praise. You have persevered, you know, and I like that. And this, I was when I was studying this, I remember never knew you. And when I thought of that, this doesn't apply to that because God is saying here, you have perseverance, you have patience. You have labored in my namesake, which means he said, I know you. So don't let no one take that word and put it against that because God, this is an intimate letter. This is a personal letter. You have not grown weary. What God said, be not weary in well-doing or in due season you shall reap if you faint not. These people persevered. Consistency. They were loyal. Looking at the body, looking at them. This is what these people were. That was high praise. High praise. One of the things that I did right now, and I'm praying that the Lord will show me when to use this, but I'm believing it's now. It's a scripture that God gave me many years ago when really when I was very early, I don't even think I was a year old in Christ, but he gave me a scripture in Matthew chapter five, verse 20. It says, for I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scrub, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. I did not comprehend that. I knew it was scary, <laughs> but I didn't comprehend it. I want you to look, even with the Pharisees, God was saying there were some righteous things that they were doing. They hearts weren't right, but they were the teachers of the laws and they were doing some right things. But your righteousness must surpass what they're doing. And that's what we want to dig into. How did we surpass that? What was they what were they lacking? What was they lacking? Let's go to the next verse. And anytime someone want to share. Let's be open and transparent. Amen. Because this is what that scripture that I just read do. And I'll go to the next scriptures, Minister Odette, please. Unless, nevertheless, I have this thing against you. Now, this is the rebuke of the lesson. We just got encouraged. We just got praised. And here we are in a rebuke. Now, this rebuke, when he says, nevertheless, nevertheless means despite all the good that you've just done, despite all this that you've been doing right, let's take this, let's take it, let's, let's take this medication, let's be transparent here, despite it all, nevertheless means despite it all, Jesus looked into the full account of all the goodness of the church at Ephesus did. And despite it all, he had something against them. Remember the rich young ruler when he came to Jesus and he said, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And then he tell him, sell all that you have. He named the commandments, love thy neighbor, 
honor thy mother and father. And the rich young ruler said, I've done all these things. And he said, then sell all you have and give it to the poor and follow me. And what did the rich young ruler do? He couldn't release the things that he had to follow God. He, God had blessed him because he had followed the laws of the commandments. But yet his heart was not willing to release those things and truly follow God. So he said, nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love. And that's the thing I need you to see. He said, you left it. There is a difference between losing something because losing something can be accidental. I can accidentally lose my car keys. I can accidentally lose my wallet. I can accidentally do it. It's not a, on purpose thing. He said, but you have a left it, which means you, you left them. God is always present. He says in his word that he will never leave us or forsake us, but we can leave him. We can leave him by turning our back on him. We can leave him by not following all that he tells us to do. We can leave him. This is the heart of the lesson, church. How do we leave our first love? I was sharing with Minister Odette and Minister Charlene. And I was when I was at this place, the Lord was dealing with me with when I was so in love with God. When I get up in the morning, before I even peed, I got up and I hit the floor on my knees. And I just say, good morning, God. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I love you so much. I just want you to know you're so important to me. And then I get up and go to the bathroom. Every morning, I, I made sure I hit my knees because it mattered so much for me to say that to him every morning. And when I was studying this, God said, you left that. And when you are struggling in your prayer life, Christine, it started here. It started because your day started on your knees. And because it started on your knees, that's what helped you to pray throughout the rest of the day. You have left your first love in this area of your life. It may not appear to be a big thing to you, but God was saying it was a big thing to him. God was telling me that I love that. That matter to me. This is a relationship, beloveds. This is an intimate relationship. And God was saying to me, Christine, I love that. I loved it so much when you did that. I, I enjoy that. Isn't that the type of relationship we want with God? See, this relationship with him, God will show you what he loves. And that was part of my love relationship that was lacking. That was lacking in my relationship. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about mine. And this is where we sit, beloved, and we examine ourselves. What is it in that love relationship if you're lacking? Because I want to keep it in a proper perspective. Because some of us are right where we should be in that love relationship. But we all can grow. Because I restored that. <laughs> I, I restored it. I started hitting my knees. I don't even know how many times during the day now I'm finding myself just getting down there. And at times being quiet. I see all the works they were doing and the things that you do for God must be founded on love. Your love for him is why you do it. I started a job and it, it doesn't pay a lot of money. It's where I'm where, where God wants me to be. And someone offered me another position paying twice as much as what I'm getting. And you know what my response was? It was no. I can't do it. Why? Because I know where I am. It's where God wants to work through me. And that matters more than money. I'm not going to lose my first love. So, Minister Car, uh, yes, you know your name. Kara. <laughs> now I'm talking to you like I'm talking to the kids. <laughs> you don't know your name. I can't say yes, it, but it's okay. Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> Do we have any comments on Facebook yes, or Zoom? Yes. Because I'm just so excited. Sister uh, Deborah Wiley, she says, thank you, Jesus. She said, left love means lost your light, not lost the love. I thought that was powerful. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, and like we things. said, I said this statement, sometimes we're so focused. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes we're so focused on work, working for Jesus, that we lose our relationship with Jesus. That's how we become religion, religious. And I don't want to become religious. I want to stay in relationship. Amen. I want to stay in this relationship. Any comments for anyone on Zoom? And we're going to um, go to the next sister, scripture. Um, <laughs> sister Chris, I what, it, what really got to me in this meeting, yes, yeah. that, you know, one, one time there's a praise, and here's a rebuke, you know, here's a knowing. And I think as parents, yes. that we have to remember in loving our yes. children, it's the act of being very transparent and very real with them. I think sometimes Amen. as parents, we can get tied up into the emotions of Amen. our children's response yes. and we fail or, or maybe we're not saying, you know, saying it the way it needs to be said because mm -hmm. even though there's a rebuke, in my mind, I still say, okay, if you're bringing that to me and I'm alive to hear that rebuke, there's hope for me. You wouldn't it unless there's an opportunity for change. And Amen. Even in a rebuke from God, there is hope. And I'm just mm. so grateful for that. And as a parent, you know, if I see certain things and with my adult children, I, I don't have kids, yes. I have adults, you know, right. that, you know, Lord, show me how I can speak to my children, you know, when Amen. you allow me to, because some things I just have to stay quiet about, yes. you know, allow God to deal with it. You know, but it still tells us what type of father he is to us when he still takes that time and yes. puts that in the word for us to grow and, and change. And I think that's a wonderful Amen. thing about God. Amen. Yeah, because God Amen. said open rebuke is better than a secret love. And then one of the things when I was studying this, you know, like um, there's a scripture that tells fathers not to provoke their sons to wrath. You know, we have to learn even in this pattern of how the letter is presented to not to provoke our children to wrath, you know, and I believe that's done within our emotions. And we need to learn how to speak as God spoke. Because even with this rebuke, God didn't come at me overwhelmingly. He just gently told me the thing that was missing within the relationship that he adored. And is it that's don't we want to hear that? I know all I could do was cry and say, God, I never knew. And he said, I like that. <laughs> so that's one of our focus. If, if we can grow by it, let's grow by it. Amen. Let's go to the next scriptures, beloved. Amen. Okay, we in five. We only have seven verses here. Amen. And this is um, when we have a warning, a commended part of the lesson. He says, "Remember, therefore, from where thy have fallen, repent and do your first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your candlestick from its place." Unless you repent. Now, one thing I did see in that, he told us to repent twice. <laughs> so that's what I see like the parent. You know, you tell somebody, so we tell them twice. You know, like my daughter said, oh, my God, mom, I got it. You know, <laughs> you know, but it's a repetitious thing. So when God said it twice, he meant it. Remember, therefore, how you've fallen. That's the first step of restoration. That's the first step of true repentance is remembering. When I think about the prodigal son and how he started to remember where he came from, he remembered how his father had servants. He didn't remember himself in the position of where he was before he left home. 
He remembered himself in the position of the greatness of his father. He remembered himself in the position of the authority that his father had over his servants. He humbled, he was in a place of humbled. He humbled himself. Don't God said, if my people will humble themselves, seek my face, turn. Those are all humbling things. And when God says to remember how you have fallen, we want to remember what the things were that we did wrong. We want to remember how that affected someone else. It's in relationship with other people. I remember when I responded in that way, how they received that. I'm not going to respond in that way. You need to remember how we have fallen off. So I remember now how God felt when I used to get on my knees. I don't want to lose that. I remember how that pulled me away from my prayer life. I got to remember that. I got to keep that in remembrance so that I don't slip, so that I don't fall. Because these are the things that are necessary to keep me in fellowship with the Lord. What things have you done to keep you out of fellowship? You have to remember how you used to spend time in the word of God. When we first loved the Lord, how much time did we spend in the word of God? I remember I would get up in the morning, kick the kick, cook my children some food, feed my husband. I'd go in the room, shut the door, just in the word. It was lunchtime. I get up, I go cook lunch, I go back in the room. Then seriously, I would get up, go cook, and go back in the room. Because I was, I mean, everything about the word of God was so new. It was, it was so fresh. It was like, man, if someone just came up to me and said anything about, you know, the Lord is just so tremendous. I was just, I was ready to shout and dance and, and scream and holler because of the goodness of God. I remember that. Remember when you were new in God, remember that relationship. Remember how you used to pray. pray. I mean, I would be in all day long. I would run in my room, go say a prayer real quick. Or somebody would say, oh, Lord, I would think of somebody. I would run in my room and go pray for him real quick. It was just a constant thing. I couldn't wait. And it was always on my knees. And I got into a place. I wasn't getting on my knees at all. I'm like, Lord, I want to get on the floor. I would lay prostate. I didn't need a collar. I didn't care if my floor was dirty. I would just lay on the floor. I would be in the kitchen cooking and I didn't even mop the floor. I would still lay on the floor. Why? Because it was such a respectful position to God. It didn't matter to me. It was just respectful to him. I had such respect. I remember the joy of getting together with other Christians. Remember, you couldn't wait to get to church. Remember, you couldn't wait to fellowship. If there was something going on, you was rushing to get there. Because you were so hungry. Remember, these are things that remember. He said, remember, therefore, how you have fallen. And to do your first, these were the first works that we did. These first works should always be in our life. Remember how you, um, remember how you constantly encourage other people about the Lord. I remember when I was new in Christ. You know what I did? God said, I would say, I need to go witness. So I went and made some flyers with New Life Church of Faith on it. And I walked Vermilion and I knocked on every single door of Vermilion and gave people a flyer of my church. It was, I wasn't trying to promote New Life. Yeah, I was because I loved my pastor. For, I was on fire. I wanted everybody to go. So I am knocking on every door of Vermilion. Giving people for, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to do it and all I wanted to do was can I just pray for you and all I knew about prayer was Lord just bless these people and whatever they need knocking on the doors all the way down Vermillion all the way back just handing out flyers that was a love relationship amen amen that was a love relationship <laughs> Minister, Amen. Minister, go Christ, ahead, love. We have a question. It says, would you def, uh, go ahead define, define repent in today's culture? <laughs> would you define repent in today's culture? in today's culture? 
Well, it's hard for me to see that one. That's a rough one. Well, as far as I see repent is according to the word of God and what God says I can and cannot do according to his standards. The world, the world's way of repent is according to small case G's. If they don't serve the same God that we serve, then their repentance is not unto the God Jehovah because true repentance is unto God. And then when we're repenting as far as other people, sometimes we're not genuinely sorry. And that genuine sorry must come through the word of God. Because if I was to offend my brother, like the word of God says, if I have something against my brother and bring my tithes into the storehouse, I need to leave that there and go make recompense with my brother. Because the fellowship mattered and the wrong that I did. But in today's society, we don't feel like we owe people things. God said, honor our mother and father. In today's society, we don't honor our parents. In today's society, they feel like their parents owe them that. I grew up with that even with my children at times. They felt as if I owed them that. So in the world's way of standard, it's according to the world's way look of forgiveness that I don't owe nobody nothing. They believe in an eye for an eye. If you do it to me, I do it to you. I don't have to repent for that. That's the way the world looks at it. But if I judge it according to the word of God, then I need to repent. It's like lust. If I look at a man and lust after him, I need to repent. But the world's way of standard, if you're like, oh, he looked good. I can look at him. I didn't sin. The world can't see sin unless they're converted into the knowledge of Christ. Unless they're baptized in the Holy Spirit, then their eyes are open. If their eyes are not open to that, then the world standard lives by the world teachings because they say everything is okay. But if we're believers and believing in the word of God, then our standard of repentance is different. Just like I said, getting on my knees, I had to repent for that because that's what God required in the relationship. Minister Charlene, you got a comment to that question, love? Yes, I do. Um, when we repent, today's standard is the way it's always been. Uh, we turn away from, we yes. walk away from, and we don't go back to that thing. That's what true repentance is, uh, to turn from that and to stay on track. Uh, God, God never intended for us to start and to stop. And so, since the word is true and cannot lie, repentance from Adam to now, from now on, should be turning from the things that we do and, and not going back to that thing. Amen. Um, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, but our goal is to keep walking to keep walking and um you know when when we it it talks about remembering uh, therefore from whence we have come and if we can easily sin and just walk away from it and yes. say oh well i messed up and we have the repentance has to come from the heart and Amen. Then, I the agree. Turning, the turning away from what we were and, and becoming that new creature. Amen. Any more comments? I think that. Uh, Minister Kerr. Go ahead. We're the talking. Uh, Sister Shannon. Hi. Good morning, ladies. Hi, sweetie. Um, I love what uh, Miss uh, Charlene has said. Um, it is so important for us to, to me to add to it. Uh, when I get delivered, it, I have uh, learned from the Lord, I will have to say, because, you know, our wisdom, him, right? <laughs> right. And so um, what came to me was recognize what the situation is first and in the reality of what it is that's going on. And so when I look at, um, say, a relationship, and I said, okay, uh, what is making me angry? What is causing me to act like this, say this, um, or what have you? And so when I recognize what it is, I can address that thing because 
really it's the fruit that I'm experiencing. If I don't go within myself mm. to find out why am I uh, feeling this way or doing this or saying this, then I will continue to go into a circle, right? Yeah. And so then my repentance is not real because I really did not address the root of the problem. And so I have found uh, this time of the year um, <clears throat> that um, during the, the uh, lockdown, shut in, um, you know, the COVID situation, I really had taken out the, the time to do some self-evaluation. And Amen. so um, now I find myself coming um, to a situation same person it could be the same situation but i'm not the same anymore more Amen. i don't even think toward that situation the way i used to so i do not respond like i used to and i tell you it's amazing some things are, like, uh, i'm overcoming quicker than others but i know what the formula is the formula is looking yes. at the situation in the truth that it is in and then asking the question, why am I uh, responding uh, like this through my behavior, through my thoughts? Because we are saying just the thought of it. Okay, I don't react like Amen. that. Right, sisters? It's like, well, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't cuss them out. I didn't, I didn't you know, slap them. I didn't, I didn't cheat on them. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. But in your mind, yeah. and that's what the Bible your is mind, saying, in your cup, what's inside that cup? And yes. so we have to even address those things. And I, that is what I was missing. You know, um, I figured, Hey, I didn't do it. I didn't say it, but, um, but I, but it's a, it's a cancer that, that comes up within you. And then you're acting a certain way or saying a certain thing. You don't even realize what you're saying or doing before you do mm -hmm. it, you know, and then Amen. you have bad relationships and a bad situation is happening. And so I just wanted to add that. Amen. I love that. I absolutely love it. I do. Thank you. And that's why it's so important. And we love it that everyone get on Zoom so that you can share those thoughts. Because I may be just sitting as the guide, as teacher, but we all have this anointing with us to share what God has to say so that we can all gleam and, and, grow, and grow in the Lord. That's the most important thing. Amen. Does God say, don't accept, don't forsake the siblings of yourselves together. And that's what we're doing on Facebook and on Zoom. We're assembling together. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. But this you have that you hate the deeds of the uh, Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Amen. Now, these were a group of people I should make minister of. <laughs> oh, <they're telling> <laughs> but they were a group of people who had took up practices as far from this, uh, what was the name of that guy, minister, that she read it for me. But more or less, they had right. it is. See, we, Nicholas, and he somehow led um, the believers some of the believers from the church of Ephesus into worship with um, idols. Um, the church, the temple of Artemis, which is a goddess, um, in, in, was a pretty big worship then. And his influence, I guess, was so strong that the Lord said, you know, um, you know, but this you have, you hate mm -hmm. the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And the Nicolaitans basically um, sacrificed, you know, ate items that were sacrificed to different idols. And that is something that God saw as detestable. Um, so, Sister Chris, you tell me where you want me to interject because I I thought you gave a really good example. On it. Um, yeah, well, yeah, and that I, I just like that detail. See, that's why it's so important for us to communicate. Because, like I said, I don't have it all, and I don't try to act like I know it all. 
I don't, but one of the things that God was dealing me with this when I was just looking at the practice and the wickedness that they were enduring, when we look at the spirit of homosexuality, when we look at the spirit of lesbian, and when God says how man has turned their natural use of a woman into a man, burning with the lust within themselves, these are the things that we deal with in our nowadays culture, that we deal with it and we say it's okay for these things to be working within the church, people who are dealing with these, because he said, I hate the deeds. Now, that's one thing I need you to see. It's not the people, it's the spirit that we're dealing with. You know, God said, I hate the things that they do, not the people, because we're all God's children. We all are. He created all this human race, and we want to deal with the spirit. I thank God for my shepherd. He is, he's, he's dealt with a many issues within our congregation when our sin has been open and he'll sit us down. He'll sit us down so that we can regroup with the Lord so that we can spend time with God and get our houses back in order so that we can return back to our first love. And these people were doing sacrifice and they were doing idle things and they were trying to get people to come into their doctrines. How many churches now we have doctrines that people have churches and they're founded on homosexuality and saying it's okay to be a homosexual. It's okay to, to live in this type of lifestyle. God loves me. God does love you, but he don't like the sin. And, and that's no different than me going out stealing. And I, I'm a perpetual stealer and I steal everything. God still loves me, but he don't like the action of the sin. And if I repeat that action of that sin, I better know that I'm making my bed in hell. Now, that's just straightforward. And we don't need to be, that's how come we're talking about the integrity. They kept the integrity of the word. They were willing to be criticized, even though they lived by the integrity of the word, not the way of the world, but they were living according to the word of God. And God began to praise them, even though he just rebuked them. He praised them because he said, you're dealing with some serious issues in your day in time and you hate them and he said I'm proud of you because you know I also hate them too I hate the deeds and that's how we got to be when we're walking with God we got to hate sin but love the sinner but we still got to stand up for it you know I dealt with a young man once who was dealing with homosexuality and I said you know what I said God loves you but he just hates the sin he don't like the sin you was not born with this thing this is something the enemy has done to you and I stay you know I've dealt with many women I minister to that deal with a spirit of, of lesbianness and I minister to them and I've seen God come in their life through recovery, through recovery, anybody know me, I'm, I'm very transparent, I'm very open, I dealt with the spirit of lesbianism, I grabbed that thing by the horn, and I thought that's something I wanted to do with my life, I believed that I was a lesbian because of the, the things that affected me in my world, because of the molestations, because of the things that affected me, and I thought that was the road I was supposed to go, but thank God, he came in and he delivered me. There is deliverance with God through the torments that the enemy do. I'm not ashamed to share. So I'm not sitting here picking on someone. I have walked those roads too. But God has set me free. There's deliverance in God because I hated the very idea that the enemy was talking to me about it. I couldn't stand it. It was foul and it was disgusting and I couldn't stand it. But thank God he delivered me. So I don't want you to sit in the seat of being uncomfortable if you're struggling. I don't want you to sit in the seat of, of being ashamed. I don't want you to sit in the seat of condemnation. I want you to sit in the seat of being restored and recovered because you're called by God. You're called by him. It's the deep God would never say God hates you. It's the deeds that he don't like, but he loves you and he has a purpose and he has a plan for your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is awesome. 
Glory to God. Okay, let's go to our last scripture. Okay, sister, you've got two slides. Would you like to read those two slides? Uh, yes, we'll read them both. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um uh, we're gonna skip that one because we went into the nicker, the nicker lady, them. So let's go to the last one. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the next, yep, let's skip that one too. <laughs> I'm sorry, I kind of went through it. I just want the last scripture itself, and we're gonna go from there. And if you want the teaching, you can download this on Facebook. And the last scripture is, it says, he who has an ear, and that's the focus right now, an ear, your heart ear. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church, to him that overcomes, to overcome these, these obstacles and these influences of the enemy through the power of God. He said, I will give you to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of a, the paradise of God. Here it is. Here's the reward. Here is the reward. If you would listen and tell, like Minister Shannon said, she has the formula now. If you would apply the things of God that he is teaching you through the process of deliverance, you will be an overcomer. That's the, that's the deliverance here. And you will eat from the tree. See, he told Adam and Eve they couldn't eat from the tree. But he's telling you, we're going to eat from this tree. And you're going to have eternal life. And you're going to be with God in paradise. Isn't that it? Isn't that what we want? That encouragement to know that I consistently do these things. What the Lord This teaching, God said, you're blessed just by reading it. And we will walk into paradise with God. Amen. Any questions or comments? Because we're friend of clothes. But we thank you from the bottom of our heart. Pastor Miller, our First Lady Beverly, New Life Church of Faith, Danville, Champaign location. Whosoever will, let them come. This is our Sunday school department, our outreach ministry that you will grow thus by. Amen. Minister Kara, any comments before we leave from anyone on Facebook? Amen. Um, just a lot of a lot of praise uh, going on. Um, thanking, thanking for the revelation and being so transparent. Uh, they appreciate the word and the transparency. Um, and they thank you for the revelation. Deliverance and healing power from our God. And Amen. So much, so much praise and worship going on right now. <laughs> Amen. To God be the glory. And we're the gonna, Amen. So we're going to close on uh, with our closing prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the revelation of your word, that your word is life and that is a live and a living word, that your word holds the very power. And we accept him as our Lord and our Savior. And we ask you, Father God, to fill us with your spirit. We confess that we have sinned and forgive us. Lord, we release everyone, 
every single person, God, we release them, we forgive them right now in the name of Jesus. Just as you have forgave us, we forgive them. Now, Lord, we thank you for your healing power. We thank you, God, that your word is going into the heart of those who are struggling with homosexual issues, for those who are struggling with lesbian issues, for those who are struggling with spirits of fear. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit, Father God, of fornication, of adultery, right now in the name of Jesus. We come against the very gates of hell, Father God. We come against every spirit of suicide and every spirit of loneliness, right now in the name of Jesus. We break it. We Bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. And we loose this hole off of the minds, off of the will, off of their emotion. Right now in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of rejection right now in the name of Jesus. We break every hole, God. Right now. Now, in the name of Jesus, we lose your anointing. We lose the spirit of peace. We lose the spirit of joy. We lose the spirit of happiness. We thank you for the garment of praise. I put on the armor of Christ upon them, Father God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, that we quit it together in this body, that we are one accord right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the healing virtue power, God, that is healing organs, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for every restoration power, God, every anointing that is going through the airway right now, Father God, that we touch and agree that it is so. Comfort those who are mourning, God, right now in the name of Jesus, God. Go in, Father God, and minister, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. We lift up those who are homeless. We lift up those who are incarcerated right now in the name of Jesus, sing the word, God, in the name of Jesus. Now we thank you, God, and we praise you that it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Next week, we will have our own Minister Charlene, and we will go to the next book. So we encourage you to read the next letter of the book. The next letter that is written to the next church. We encourage you to read it ahead of time. That's your Sunday school book. <laughs> so pick up your Bible and read the next church. So then you can maybe write down some questions or some insights on what you may get from it. So we thank you again on behalf of our own Pastor Miller and First Lady Beverly for allowing us to share the word of God with you from New Life Church of Faith, Champaign and Danville. Whosoever will, let them come. Amen. Amen, amen. What praise Hallelujah. Awesome. awesome Glory to amen. God. Oh my goodness. This has amen. just really been Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. So, Hallelujah. God. Amen. Amen. Remind amen. Hallelujah. You to tune in today amen. at 12 noon uh, for our, our new life church of faith mm -hmm. service. Our own Amen. has a yes, good, some spiritual good, some tea. <laughs> so it is good. You don't want to miss this one, Saints. He will be yeah. preaching. Yes, closing the mind of Satan. Amen. 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 So it's going to be good. So tune in. Amen. And uh, for those who aren't on Facebook, our morning service will be posted later this afternoon on YouTube. Amen. As well as this Sunday school lesson will also be posted on YouTube. So please like and share our YouTube page um, as well as our Facebook page. So to God be the glory. Go forth in this blessed day knowing that Jesus loves you. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Excellent um, teaching, Minister Christine. God bless. God bless Love you, Minister Shirley. Love you.